By fine-tuning Flux One, you can make consistent images of yourself and you don't even need to write a single line of code because you can do it very easily on the web. And we're going to see how to do that on Replicate. So let's have a look. So this is quite a simple process and all you're going to need is one, a Replicate account, two, a collection of images of yourself, and three, two to three US dollars. So for step one, you need to gather your images and you need to have a minimum of 10, although more is better. And they should all be clear, large images and with a variety of poses and crops. So you, you want some full body, some portrait, head and shoulders, some torso, etc. And a variety of lighting conditions. So this is the collection that I used. Now, this collection could be more diverse but I just wanted to quickly put it to the test and actually the results are okay. However, I think if I worked harder at the collection and made it more diverse in terms of crop and lighting conditions, then possibly I could get even better results. So that's something you could play with. And if you find that that improves things, perhaps you could leave a comment in the comments below about that. Also, this collection is quite big, there's 60 odd images and I, I really don't know if that actually improves things if the images are quite similar. I would suggest that things could improve if you use less images with more variety. So perhaps the quality of the diversity of the collection is more important than the sheer number of images. That's something that I may well test. If you'd like me to test that and make a video on it, please leave me a comment below. Just to note, the images can be WebP, JPEG or PNG. If possible, use 1024 by 1024 pixels as a minimum. The file name is not important, so don't worry if it's a complete mess, nor does the aspect ratio matter. So you can have a mix of vertical, horizontal, square, and everything in between. And also there is no real official minimum, but 10 is the recommended minimum. So to complete step one, when you have all of your images, you just need to create a compressed file out of them. Okay, so whichever format of compressed file you use on your system, uh, I have a zip file here. So I would just choose on a Mac, select all, right click, compress, and then we have our compressed file being created. Okay, and you would call that data. We'll just change it from archive to data. And there we have it. And then we can move on to step two. Okay, so in step two, we go to replicate and we go to the Ostris Flux Dev LoRa Trainer. You do need a replicate account as previously stated. So I'm assuming you have that. If not, just create an account and set up a payment method. You do need to do that too. So to make your own fine tune of Flux One, what you do is you create a new model. So the first option on this list is the destination option and it says select a model. So you click here and you create a new model. These are the two models that I've already created here. So we create new model and then you give it your unique name. So I'm going to call it Jonathan Flux 3. Okay, and make it public, you don't have to. And then we get to the next step, which is to input the images. So we click the this icon here to upload. And then again, we click here in the cell and we upload our compressed file. So that goes up. And then the next step is very important because you have to create a trigger word. Now the trigger word is vital because when you're running your model in playground mode and you insert a prompt, you must tell your model that you want it to use what you've trained it on, i.e. in this case, my images. Okay, so if I don't use my trigger word, it may generate an image which doesn't look like me. Okay, so it's very important. So I'm just going to say John's Hub Jam 3. Uh, I have already used one and two. Now it's very important that the trigger word is a made up word and not a real word. For example, you can't use cyberpunk or dog because it can't differentiate that from your trigger word. So the trigger word has to be something completely made up. Like in my case, I used John's Hub Jam and that is it. Now we can create our training and that this will create our fine-tuned model, which we can then run. Just before we go ahead and hit create training, I wanted to just mention that 
if we go up to the top here, it tells us how much that it would cost to train our model on the NVIDIA H100 GPU. So that is one and a half tenths of a cent on a dollar. So training time is typically 20 minutes, which means that the average cost would be about $1.85. That's for a training of about 20 images. Okay, so now we can move to the next step and create the training. So we click the create training button and training starts. Okay, so we'll leave that running and come back to it. Okay, so about 20 minutes have gone by and now we have our training completed. So as we see here, it says training, Flux Dev Laura Trainer, something Flux 3, status succeeded, duration 23 minutes and the training was successful. So now we can run our trained model and we can do that by clicking this button here, run trained model and it will open up our trained model. Okay, so let's look at how to do this. It's pretty simple. So all we need to do is provide a text prompt if we want it to generate an image, but we must make sure that we used our trigger word as previously mentioned. And there is a blue field here which reminds you that you must use your trigger word. The trigger word for this model is John Sub Jam 3. Be sure to include it in your prompt. So I'm going to try this prompt, a photo of John Sub Jam 3 as a hobbit. Now before we hit run, let's just scroll down. Okay, now important to note that we can use either dev or Schnell, but uh, I would suggest using dev as it's quite a lot better than Schnell. Okay, so but you do have the option of changing to Schnell. And then regarding the guidance scale, by default it's on three and a half, okay, but I find that that's not giving me good results really. So I'm usually using that somewhere between five and six, more likely around six which I find does give me more consistent images that look like me and that look realistic. So may not be the same for you, but that's what I'm using, okay? The rest of it I'm gonna keep the same and let's just run it. Okay, so yeah, not bad. It's got a lot of the very characteristic uh, skin folds and creases on my face. Looks like I might be suffering the effects of wearing the ring for too long. It's, it's making me look a little bit ill, I think, but it does, the resemblance is pretty good. Okay, so that is it. You've seen the entire process. It's very simple indeed. But just to summarize, there's just three steps. The first is to prepare your images in a collection. The second is to go to the Flux LoRa Trainer on Replicate. And the third is to just run your trained model using prompts. It really couldn't be any easier. So have a play, see what you can get out of it. And let me know in the comments below how it went for you. Now that you've seen the process, I just want to show you some of the outputs that are considered to be successful. So starting off with this one here, the prompt was a bald man sailing on a yacht in a chic outfit, enjoying a calm day at sea with seagulls flying overhead. Now I added a bald man to the prompt because I noticed that if I didn't do that, it was almost always adding hair, which would be nice in real life, but in real life I'm naturally bald. So, so if I want the guy in the output image to be bald like me, then I have to actually mention that in the prompt. Okay, so this one I would say is a very, very good likeness and a nice photographic looking image. Okay, so that would say that was a good success. The guidance scale on this one was low because this was one of the few that came out well while I was trying it at about two. So now we have this one, uh, reading in a cozy library surrounded by towering bookshelves with a warm fireplace in the background. So this is pretty good. The face isn't 100% but it's pretty good indeed and the guidance scale here was 5.66 now moving on so this one I do look a bit funny I look very skinny but it really does look like me I think this was attending a space themed party in a futuristic outfit with a backdrop of stars planets and space themed decor now actually yes this brings me to a another point I did find in general although we're getting some pretty good consistent images of me, that the prompt adherence was not that good. Because here, for example, well, I've got a shirt that looks like it's got a lot of NASA stickers on it. So you could pass that as being a space themed party shirt, but it does say in a futuristic outfit, and I wouldn't call that too futuristic. And then it says a backdrop of stars, planets, 
a space themed decor but we're not seeing that it just looks like any old bar really so not too good on the prompt adherence there now we have this one this is a very good likeness i think although i think i look a bit older than i do now and the guidance was 5.3 however again it's more or less ignored the prompt besides generating an image of myself because he was supposed to be attending a space themed party and he's just sitting somewhere where well there's no real clue as to where he is so it's it's a good image but it's not attending a space themed party again the prompt adherence wasn't that great now this time we have a roller skating through a neon lit city at night so in this case the prompt adherence is better we do have a neon lit city at night and roller skating it looks quite realistic it's a very very good likeness of me it's there's a slight strange posture going on and the neon lights are very symmetrical in the street but uh, I think overall it's a good image and guidance scale was 5.3 and now this one sitting on a yacht in a chic outfit enjoying a calm day at sea with seagulls flying overhead so yeah it's got the prompt adherence and the context right the face is almost I mean it's very very close it's just I think slightly off and overall yeah a good image well, not, not sure if I'd call that a chic outfit, perhaps. And the guidance scale was 5.3. And then we have this one here, which looks a little bit less realistic to me. And this was guidance scale 6, which is going towards the, the less realistic end sometimes. So relaxing on a beach hammock. So yeah, that's got it right. That's uh, got the context right and the prompt adherence. So that's a very good one too. Moving on, we have this one of a medieval knight. So I like it a lot. It's the guidance scale is six, so perhaps it's going towards looking less realistic, but well, it just looks like a high contrast photo, really. I think it looks very realistic. So, no background, so it looks like a studio shot, so it's out of context, but it's really good. I think I like it very, very much. Again, it's not a hundred percent me, I think it's maybe 98 percent me, and then moving down. Okay, so this one I think resembles me less actually but I do like it it's it does resemble me but I would say this is mm, I don't know maybe 90% me and then the guidance scale six Superman I, I didn't say Superman I said superhero but it's decided to make me Superman and I think this is a very good resemblance indeed I think it's really good um, at guidance scale six six point oh one and now performing on stage at a concert playing an instrument or singing in front of a cheering crowd so so yeah, this is very good. Not quite right. I th it doesn't look like me very much, but I'd say not quite. And then I think the audience are made up of variations of me, of John's Hub Jam 3, which is a bit odd. Uh, so they're all male, same age, and they've all got a variation of my face. So that was unexpected. And so this was a guidance scale of six. And then this one where I said Julius Caesar guidance scale six i think that looks very much like me perhaps slightly off but very very slightly very good realistic image again it's done it as a studio shot no background so could superimpose that if you wanted but uh, i would have thought it would put in some roman context just by default but it hasn't perhaps that's because i said as julius caesar so it's interpreting it as acting as perhaps Actually, no, I see what's happening here. This is to do with the data set. This is to do with the collection of images. We have a fair few here with the black background, a black backdrop. Not this one, because I gave it some context. But where we have no context, well, we've either got a black backdrop or a white backdrop, which are very reminiscent of the backdrops in the original photos. So it seems to be the case that it takes that into account. If you don't give it an explicit context to work with, then it takes the context from the images that you provide, which in this case, many occasions were just a black background, a black backdrop or a white backdrop, and occasionally a partially lit backdrop. Like here, we have a the Julius Caesar image has a slight bit of lighting coming in here, top left. You can see it there. So I think that's the the explanation for this. In fact, let's just do a quick test. 
I'm just going to try it out on the same model that generated the, the Julius Caesar image or the medieval knight image. Let's try the medieval knight and this time we'll give it context at a jousting tournament. That should be enough. Okay, and we're on guidance scale six. Okay, let's run. Okay, so here we go. Yes, indeed. If we give it a context, then it will work with it and it will generate the image with that context. If you don't provide a context, it looks like it will take it from the images you provided that it was trained on. Okay, so you could use that either way. You could not provide a context in your prompts and provide it with a set of images with context that you want it to use. Or you could just completely ignore the context in the images that were provided and give it the context every time you generate. And then uh, I, I, I said, OK, as a superhero, but not Superman. But it's ignored me. It's made me Superman with these kinky, kinky, this kinky Superman suit with the nipple buttons. Uh, not sure what they're supposed to do. All right. Again, but it looks very much like me indeed. Guidance scale six. And this one I like a lot. It's not 100 percent, but it's very, very close again. The guidance scale of six. Uh, I, this again, the, the prompt hasn't really had, adhered to it. I, I put as an alternative superhero. So, I mean, it just looks like a guy with a shirt. So nothing really alternative superhero-y about him, but very nice. And then this one, I said, make me a Lenin in Russia in the year 1900, smoking a pipe. So I thought this was okay. It's made me look older and very nice black and white style image and could be, you know, the, the clothing and everything is, is could well be from the 1900s and the style of the photo. It's even added some photo degradation here. So I like that one too. That was a guidance scale of six. And here, right, so this is visiting Japan, guidance scale 6.5. Now, I like the image a lot. Uh, however, it, it's not obviously Japan because there are no Japanese people. And I did find, I tried this two or three times and it was not capable of generating Japanese people in the background. So I don't know why, I don't know what that could be about. So there you go, that's that's the output. Pretty similar, I would say, pretty consistent. And I think, and perhaps the best consistency we've had from an open source model. So, and then just finally, there were a few more that I did, which I didn't save as examples. So we had this one here. This was an example of where it put hair on my head with, because I didn't say bald. I, t I said DJing at a club, so that's quite good. I think the likeness is good and it's quite funny to see me with hair like that. And then I said ET in front of a full moon, a levitating BMX. So that's quite good, except I've got a little bit of an impossible thing going on here with the feet, I think, but you don't notice it at first glance and the likeness is very good indeed and this one is one of my favorites i really love it i said a polaroid of a, of a spaceman fit twiddling with a cosmic machine and it did this lovely image with uh, a fabulous likeness of me i i think so there you have it that is how to fine tune flux one to create images of yourself you can do the same procedure to create a, a style a trained style so you would do that by making a collection of images all with a very similar style and then using that as the data set to train your model and then the model should generate images in that style when you use the trigger word that you invent for it you'll find all the links to what we looked at today in the description below as well as a guide by zeke z-e-k-e -E, as to how to do this but any questions please leave them for me in the comments below and if you like this video please give it a like a subscribe hit the notification bell if you want to see more videos of this type from me and thank you for watching.